She was the seductive and sassy goldfish that we fell in love with in just one short week on The Masked Singer. But last night the mask came off and she was revealed to be none other than national treasure, Christine Anu. Take a look. It's my life. <laughs> yes. Well, we were sad to see her go, but we couldn't be happier that she is joining us right here on the Ben Robin Robo Show. Yes. Christine, Woo. welcome to the show. Happy to be. Hey, happy people. How are you? <laughs> you know, Christine, it makes me laugh. I don't know if this is my immature shy side. Every time they're yelling, take it off, take it off, especially to a female performer. I can't help but get the giggles for some reason. <laughs> I, I, didn't even, I did not even register that until you said that, you naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Just me, don't worry. Look, you've had such a long and successful career. I was... Um, a, a, a teenager when Party first came out, uh, you know, and and Stop the it. song and the songs that you've had, you you have created a soundtrack. But can <laughs> how bizarre is it to think you started off with this great clip and and Island Home and songs like that, and now you've been a goldfish in a reality show uh, <laughs> that and everyone's just thrilled to see you. Yeah. Um, no, I've <laughs> Can I just say, um, Christine, I need to save you here. I need to save you from this. Rob just looks really old. Are you thinking in your head, that man was a teenager when Party came out? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I think there's a bit of lying going on there. Um, no, it was 93, wasn't it? Not, not my words. Uh, but uh, I, I've, I've always, look, you know, I always thought to myself, when I grow up, I want to be a goldfish. And I think... <laughs> I, I think that, that that's exactly. But can I just say, Tim Chapel, um, Oscar, oh, sorry, Academy Award winning um, uh, costume designer, uh, designed this beautiful frock, which I want to wear amazing. every day of my life just to vacuum my floors. <laughs> in my life. Um, it was it was elegant. It was beautiful. It was graceful. But gosh, I mean, I didn't get to see any of the other uh, costumes until I was on stage with them, and then I learned that there were still more. Yes. <laughs> like because yes. you're, you're really you're literally in the dark uh, through the whole process, and it's such a tightly secured environment. Um, and then there's COVID as well, so there's those restrictions that are going on. But I just I, I never thought that it would be this amazing experience that it is. First and foremost, because I got to get out of my house for a change. I got to go into state where, you know, everybody's looking at Victoria like they're all lepers um, and participate in a show that is bringing joy uh, into people's lounge rooms when entertainment has been sucked out of my life when it's all when it's all <laughs> that I am about yeah. I haven't been able to entertain haven't been able to perform like so many of us and so it was great to be do, able to do something that was completely out of my comfort zone <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and, uh, I and just do you know Christine, I just was wanting to say to you, because, like, you did Moulin Rouge with Baz Luhrmann, so you understand costuming, right? You understand the pain of getting into, say, corsets and things like that. But with this costume, was it harder to get into than a Baz Luhrmann costume? Like, how long did it take <laughs> you to get in and out of this outfit? Well, let's be real. There are so many people helping you put that on, that there are so many faces that know what my bum looks like now, you know, um, to help you put that such on. Such a glamorous industry. <laughs> it's, a, it's such a glamorous industry. Don't, don't um, let them tell you th that it's uh, not. Um, but, yeah, so there, there are a lot of people helping you get it on because there's, uh, uh, there's so much time. There's only so much time before you have to get things done. Um, ready and we all know that in the entertainment industry it's all about hurry up and mm. wait yes 
That's true. Now, Christine, I know you are an absolute bloody cracker. Uh, you, you're a national legend. Uh, but tell me, were you surprised with your wonderful voice that the judges, none of the judges actually picked you? Not, not really. Not really. There, there are so many elements that go into this show. It's such a, it's such a clever show when you think about it. Yeah. Um, you've got, uh, you're covered. Somebody's covered by this elaborate costume, and their, their voice is recognisable. But then there's a myriad of clues, like that, a montage of things that are going on, and then, and then each of the panel are influencing their thoughts one direction or the other, mm. and then yeah. they start to go down one. Uh, particular rabbit hole to to the other so um i thought i thought my voice would have been a dead giveaway but then mm. that's because all of the aboriginal and torres strait islander community around australia would know my voice and then my family would them. know we it. know your voice it, it, it's your voice is so iconic in this country you have some of the most recognizable songs it's it's not just the indigenous population of this country you have transcended into being someone the whole country looks to yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I, look i i thought my voice would have been recognizable i thought that the first uh, text messages um, that came through. It's kind of a dead giveaway when you when your friends text you and you don't text them back. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, know, you know what I mean? It's like, um, and then the only people, and like this is, everybody knows that I, I'm not good at keeping secrets, but one thing I've learned about myself through um, Masked Singer is that I actually can, and I'm very good ah. at it. Ah. Uh, and not none of my family knew that I was going to be on the show. They've we've got a messenger feed, and we we all get together um, daily to talk about things. And they've been taking pictures of me and putting it up there. And I've been giggling to myself, going, "Aren't I good?" <laughs> <laughs> Can I? I've got a couple of questions for you. Is there an added pressure when you're an established artist in this situation? Um, you know, you don't have your image. You get to... It's the one of the few occasions you get to completely reinvent yourself, isn't it? Anonymity is what every celebrity wants to have. I, I Well, maybe I'll speak for myself. I love anonymity. I, I want to walk down the street and just be a normal person. Mm. Um, that uh, That's fantastic. And you know what? There's no added pressure when you've got this on and you, you've, you can be any... You can reinvent yourself my partner was saying it's like it's like having an affair <laughs> with a fish yeah, they got too big, a bit too excited about that did they <laughs> um the, uh, look, yeah the other thing i want to ask you about is that you just mentioned um how hard COVID 19 has been on the entertainment industry and it has become a running theme on a lot of uh celebrities we've spoken to because it really, it not only affects incomes, but it affects um, people being able to create. And, and as artists, what you do is create and communicate with an audience. How difficult has COVID-19 been on you from that point of view? Yeah, look, as a ra radio presenter, I, it's one of the first things that I ask to anybody that I'm interviewing. And I think that it's kind of the same answer across the board, but it's also not a one size fits all situation as well. I think we've we've come out of it in in different ways. I think creatively we've gone inside of ourselves when normally uh, in the, the the past day, past year, or past lifetime, uh, we've not been able to do that because we don't have the time. But I've actually had time to sit down and write poems. I used to love doing that, um, writing. Uh, songs, writing, I'm writing, writing, writing. I'm doing things that I've never been able to uh, have, have time to do before. But maybe that was just because we used that as an excuse. Mm. None of us have an excuse now. We're all, we've all been forced to slow down and really reflect, yeah. um, reflect uh, about inwards, inwards and re reflect about our families and just reflect about what, what mark are we leaving um, in this place and in this time? Uh, and and I think it's a time to um, find what how we belong to each other as as yeah. a community, a worldwide community.
Well, I tell you what, just asking for a friend, a.k.a. Rob McKnight as a 16-year-old, looking over your career, <laughs> I need to ask you this. I mean, you've been in Matrix Reloaded, you've won Arias, you've been in Moulin Rouge, you've got countless hits. What has been the one thing in your career that you're the most proud of? Well, that's pretty obvious. It's my children. Oh, um, nice. And I thought you were going to say yeah. being on the Ben Robin Robbo show, but there you go. <laughs> well, I can I can I come down my list? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it, goes, it goes my children and it goes talking to you guys, obviously, and then the masked singer. <laughs> Christine, what a fabulous you know place to leave it. You, you took the bait, so to speak. Thank you so much for being on the river. <laughs> Thank you for being on the Ben Robin Robo Show. You are an absolute delight. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's the Ben Robin Robo, Ben Robin Robo, Ben Robin Robo Show.